As pickleball evolves, it gets more and more aggressive. That dink to death strategy just doesn't work anymore. After all, at the higher levels, your opponents will attack if they have the opportunity. Whoa. Oh. The crap. No. In general, you never want to attack if the ball is below your knee. Why you ask? It's simple because you have to hit the ball up, right? Because it's below your knee and you're speeding it up and a pickleball court is not that big and it might go out. So you'd have to hit with a ton of spin and hit it a lot slower. And it might just look a little something like this top left hand corner. It's out. And if you're hitting it up a little slower, what are your opponents going to do with that high ball? Crush you, right? Crush you. There are some exceptions, right? A really low backhand roll with a lot of spin and off-speed changeup does work, but it doesn't work all the time and you have to really pick your opportunities of when to use it. It happens that quick. You missed it, right? Take a look at this in slow motion. Mark plays senior pro. Look at the pace he hits that ball at, right? Medium speed, not too hard. And that would have went in. It really would have, just like that one. However, his opponent knew what he was doing and he got his partner in trouble. Attacking from below the net is dangerous after all. When we attack, we have to think about a number of factors. Am I faster than my opponent? Where's my opponent's paddle position? What direction is the wind blowing? What kind of ball are we using? On the other hand, it is a grave sin, a mass injustice to all pickleball players not to attack those high balls, not to put them away. Remember that placement is so much more important than speed and choose those targets wisely. Well, what are some good targets we should go for? Open court space, always go for. If it's open, we speed it up to open court space. Opponent's feet always works. Opponent's body works, but where on the body? Let me break it down right now. Dominant shoulder, I'm right-handed. Go at that right shoulder. Right hip always works. Why do I say this? We want to get them to what? Chicken wing, right? It's very tough to cover here. It's easy to block with that backhand. Most pickleball players are looking for it, but if we can get them to chicken wing like this, it's going to pop up and we're going to win the point right now. Joey, what is a chicken wing? I'll run to Hooters, I'll show ya. No, that is a chicken wing right there. That's Cliff Pickleball hitting Danae from all things pickleball in the right elbow because she has a dominant right hand. And that's a great example of Mark Napotovich getting chicken wind as well. Remember, it is way more effective to attack the person directly in front of you. There's less space in between. They have less time to react. And also it opens up less angles, right? If you attack cross court, there's a lot more they can do. If we do attack from that knee level, we have to hit the ball up. So we do have to put some spin. So it's a little more risky, but I do recommend it. It is so important to be deceptive with these low speed ups, right? We really have to disguise it as a dink so they really have less time to react. One more thing, if we are attacking from that knee level, we most likely are not going to win the point on that speed up. So when I speed up with my backhand roll, I'm guessing forehand put away every single time because this is what always happens. If you look at Riley Newman, he has that backhand attack and directly follows it up with what the forehand put away. Right on cue. Riley Newman, Annalie Waters in the near court. Watch Riley Newman hit that two-handed attack and he hits a forehand right after. He didn't quite get exactly what he wanted. However, he won the point, right? He hit a two-handed attack. He reset with that forehand. He would have liked to put it away. However, he took what his opponents gave him, right? And this is another point where they have trouble attacking. Riley Newman is in the near court. He's trying to hit offensive dinks, trying to hit at the feet, yet he can't really get what he wants. This is going to happen sometimes, so what do we do? We don't have to win the point when we're attacking. We're looking for the pop-up so we can put away the next ball. And as you get better, we can attack based on our opponent's positioning, right? Where they have that paddle and we can really take advantage of that. 
After all, you don't want to attack your opponent from below the net when he's really sitting on it with his paddle in the ready position and he knows what you're doing, right? We have to use the element of surprise. This is me hitting a slow motion backhand roll. I'm really brushing up on it, right? Brushing up, hitting with less speed. However, deco bar hits a flick, right? Just flick, no spin, tries to hit J.W. Johnson right in the chest. Take a look at it in slow motion. Now look at J.W.'s paddle position. Slow, it is baiting his opponents into trying to hit him, trying to speed it up because he is the fastest player on the planet. Scenario number one, we're looking to speed it up, but our opponents are ready. That in that ready position, they're really looking for it. So what do we do? One, don't speed it up, but continue dinking aggressively. Have some type of pattern in your head, like one to the middle foot, two outside foot, one to the middle foot. Keep them guessing so we can get that pop up. J.W. Johnson is in the near left-hand corner. He loves to speed the ball up, but there's nothing to speed up in this point, so he generates a pop-up to put away, right? With a beautiful dink middle at the, what, inside foot? Yeah. Two, try to do variant speed-ups, different paces, different parts of the body. Again, try to hit that dominant shoulder right, right hip, right shoulder, the feet, a lot of things could work. And it's always nice to tag your opponents in the chest once in a while. Beware though, some opponents with very fast hands will really tempt you, right? J.W. Johnson, one of the best players in the world, his ready position is almost just like this, right? He wants you to go straight at him so he can put the ball away. This point illustrates how easy pickleball could be if you speed up the correct ball, right? Serve, drop, reset, get to the kitchen, speed it up, put it away, feel good right now. So when we're playing a really good 5-0, we have to learn fast because they will. So we have to keep changing our strategy, keep changing our dinking patterns, keep changing where we attack so we can win the pickleball game because that's what it's about. One tip that will help you win more games is this. If you're really speeding it up and most of these speed ups will go out but your opponent is hitting them, just keep doing it right because we look like Superman or Superwoman to them because I hit an out balls. One of the grave sins in all of pickleball. Some other things you can do, forehand off-speed variant, backhand off-speed variant, some spin dinks, keep them guessing, change dinking patterns. I know this video is on attacking from below the net, but I believe this point is about attacking from a different planet with Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson. Pickleball is so fun. Pickleball lovers, take a look at this video. It was so good. But let me ask you, when you attack, do you attack any balls below your knee? Ever. Do you? I'm really just trying to keep you a little bit more so you click. And don't forget, here are the Pickleball Pirates. We may love pickleball just as much as you do. I know it's tough to believe. I know it is, but it's true.